We're here at the ETG Tech Center in front of a Quasar machine, and Chloe's going to show me how to create a pocket on a hide and hind control. Is that right, Chloe? Yeah, 100%. I'm going to show you how easy it is, um, she says, uh, to create a pocket in um, just a bit of aluminium or something like that. Brilliant. You've not run through this before, have you yet? Not no, today, so anyway. we've just done this. I've been <laughs> off the tools for about a year. Um, so for me to pick it back up quite easily, we'll, we'll show you how easy it is. Oh, it is for anyone to pick up how to make it. Right, Let's get started. So what do we do first? So I'm in the program management. All we've done is press this button here um, and we're going to create a brand new file starting from the beginning. So what we're going to do is we're going to come across, making sure you're in the edit mode, right? And you're going to come and you're going to come across to new file. What are we going to call it? Should we just call it Rowan? Let's call it Rowan if you want. Yep. Perfect. So, no, I'm not doing this. You're showing me. Rowan. Okay. I'll show Rowan how to do it. So <laughs> click OK. And obviously this Quasar UX500 has got the touchscreen um, control yeah, which is obviously well. a lot easier than having to go in, enter, enter, enter. enter wanna, and if wanna... someone spilled tea over your control, you can go. So it's going to put us in, you want to be millimeters or inches. We want to be millimeters, don't we? Yeah. Okay, so it's going to come up. We're going to pick whether we've got a square, square, square stock, round stock. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? If you, shall I pick square stock? Yeah, so, Brilliant. so Z means that's the Z plane that the tool's coming down. So yeah. what we'll do is we'll press enter. So X, this is your. So it says uh, somewhere Work your minimum, yeah. your minimum. So it will be zero. Yeah. I always like to work with my x x zero y zero on the bottom left hand corner. Yeah. <clears throat> that's how I've done it, and I always stop at z zero. Anything that's in the material will be, will be z minus. Anything that's above the material will be z plus. Right, okay. So if it's minus, you cut it into the material. If you plus, you're away. So we'll do that. We'll do zero, and then we'll go z. We'll say the, um, the material... Block minus 50, for example. Yeah, so it will be 50. Because obviously minus is smaller than zero, isn't it? So yeah. we'll go next. It then takes you next to your block form. So which what's your maximum? So we'll do 150 by 150 square. Yeah. Right? And then your Z at zero, because that's your top limit. Okay, and if, I can see it tells you exactly what it's asking for, just yeah. in the top bit here. And if you want to go back, it will always tell you, right, what... What are you doing? And this got me, when I first started using Hide to go back, you have to press left inside the line, yeah. don't you? Yeah, yeah. If you press up, you'll go up, up a line, you'll so you're go, going into the next next command. Yeah, 100%. So you're always working back on yourself. So you, uh, you're always using, always remember your Z as well, because that's the axis your tool is going to be in. If you haven't got that, it doesn't know whether your tool could be in the Y axis, it could be in the uh, X axis. Which for a, f a fifth axis machine, I guess, is quite important. Yeah, 100%. And you need to know where your data points are. So now, so if I go into test run, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my file, uh, bring up my file. So I'm gonna just going to go to last files because I haven't got time to waste searching through all my documents. Oh, okay. So okay, it's just so right there. Yeah, your next one is there. So you press enter. Yeah. So here, is our block form. So 150 by 150 by 50. It's almost like a CAD system, this, isn't it? You can, you can, it's a very, very simple around. system, CAD system, right? Yeah. And if you're basic, you're doing basic milling that doesn't need a five hour tool pass, this hide nine is great to be able to get trained up on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a pocket in the middle. So we've got 150 square. So let's do a 50 by 50 pocket in the middle. Brilliant. So we'll go back to, um, our programming and we'll come across bear with me cycle death okay so we've got your drilling oh, pockets can i press this one yeah now? push cam. pockets yeah so you have you this is brand new to you so what we've got is we've got a square pocket circular pocket a slot um an angled slot and then these three here are studs so we're clearing They're out positive. The, so what we're going to do is we're going to go for this Okay, so these are all the inf this is all the information that this machine needs to create this pocket. So we're going to do roughing and finishing, roughing or just finishing. So we could go in with roughing and then we could come in with a different finishing tool just by copying this piece of uh, information. We're going to do roughing and finishing, sorry, uh, we're going to do roughing and finishing as one. So we'll leave that as zero. Yep. So your first side length, so we said we were going to do 50 by 50, weren't we? Yeah, okay, so, so that's 50 by 50 in there. Yeah, second side length. And as you can see, these Q numbers, yeah, so they tell they you exactly what they need. Exactly, and it's, it's so user friendly. So we'll put 50 in there. How many times okay. have you taught this? Oh God, I used to go around, <laughs> I used to go around the UK. This is what I used to teach. It used to be either three day training. On I bet the you computer. got sick of seeing this screen then, didn't you? I'll tell you what, it's quite nice to come back to it. So your corner <laughs> radius, we'll leave that at zero. Um, allowance for size, we'll put 0.5 because we want to come back in and take the other bit off. I guess if you leave it at zero, your corner radius is the corner is the radius of the it's tool. It's the radius of the tool, yeah. If you've got a 
sometimes on your drawing you might have a five mil radius, ten mil, but your tool will always correspond because you can't have a ten mil with a five mil radius, can yeah. you? It's not going to be able to get into the corners. So angular rotation, if we wanted it like a diamond shape, we could um, ninety, uh, sorry, uh, forty five degree it, but we're going to keep it at zero because we want it square. So pocket position. So say this is our um, our piece of material. I want to put that date and point bang smack in the middle. So the pocket position is going to be zero. If our pocket was here, we pick one to uh, correspond it. It's so user friendly. It is, and I can use. see if if you we're on a, quite a complex five axis machine here. But I think it's set up to be versatile so that if you want to do uh, big complex five axis jobs with OpenMind or, or some other CAD systems, CAM systems are available, you can do. But if you want to just do some a few jobs and knock up a few blocks here 100%. and there, you just do it on the control. 100%. If you've just got some facing off or some drilled holes, tapped holes, this is a great system for you to just be able to go on. And we're, we're sh showing people at home how quick and easy it is to just create one singular pocket. So feed rate for million, 500, that's fine. So which way are you going to climb? Are you going to climb mill or are you going to... Climb, we're going to yeah, climb mill. Climb this mill. Is a... That's nice for our tool, right? Yeah, exactly. So how deep do you want to go? I guess 20 mil is good. 20 I mean, it's already 20 mil. There's some sensible defaults in here yeah, already. Yeah, 100%. So as you can see, it's minus 20 because we're going into the material. So you're plunging there. So how far That's do you want to plunge down in? every time yeah, you go so down. Yeah, so it's going to do five mil. If you've got a big beast of a tool. I was going to say, these are some big fat WNT so cars. So I think what? we can go 15 mil. Okay, 15. Problem that's is, though, if you go 15 mil, then you've got a five mil little step you've got to take out again. So but that's, that's, that's what you, as a tool manufacturer, you need to liaise need to with. Trade, so yeah. now we're going to go 20 mil depth. Plunging depth obviously means you step over. So you're going to do five mil, then ten, go down to 10 mil, five mil, step over, then down to so 15 mil. So we're going to take mil. four cuts in, yeah. in the depth. Um, Let's do it in two cuts. Let's do 10 mil. Fabulous. But Let's, if you've got an allowance for the floor, then obviously you're going to be taking 10 will, mil once. But it will take that into consideration. 9.8 mil afterwards. 100%. So allowance for floor, leave five mil on, uh, sorry, not five mil, 0.5 mil on there. Feed rate for plunging, 150. So it's going to be moving 150 millimeters per minute while it's plunging into that material. So you're in feed for finishing. So where do you want to go? So we need to go to zero because that's going to go to the size of our pocket. So we've left 0.5 on, so it's going now to zero. Okay. So that's in the Z axis. Ah, see, I think that's quite, that's, that's okay. So this is in across your size. Yep. So this is your wall finishing. Okay. Right, okay. So the setup clearance. So once it's finished, it will automatically go up to two mil above. I like to change that to five because yeah, it's two more not to very see. Much, yeah, you can set that to 50, you can set that to 100 so it can shoot straight up. Okay. Surface coordinates. So where are we starting? If you've got a if you've got a bit of material that's got a ruggedy edge on the top, we haven't face milled it at the minute. Yours might be 0 0.2, uh, sorry, 2.5 mil over. So if it is, we can put 2.5 in. But for instance, we'll say it's all flush, so it's zero. We're all set flat. Okay. okay. Second set up clearance. So obviously we set it at five. This is now 50, so it will go to five mil and it will shoot up to 50. Okay. It's okay. all path overlap, so this means it will come round and it will be... This is like your step over. Yeah, in, so in, we'll in keep that system. at one. Okay. Your plunge. So this is really nice that I like. So we can go straight in, we or can, can helical in, yeah. or we can, you can like, ramp, in. ramp it in. So I like to helical in, which is automatically yeah. um, a bit on there. Which is great. You don't normally get those kinds of options on, no. on programming, on and the control. If you didn't, you'd have to... You'd have to work it all out in your head. So it's coming down this much a minute. So this is the angle that it is. And it's like... That'd be silly. quite complicated to do yeah. GO2s moving so, down and GO3s. Now what we're going to do is finishing feed rate, which is fine. Feed rates. So as you have a look, you can see all the different all the different options that you can have. Okay, so you can even send the tool the other way around to finish it up. But what we're going to do is we're going to stay at zero because it's recommended. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we've told the machine we're going to do a pocket, but now we need to tell it to do the pocket. Yep. Also, I haven't picked a tool yet. So what I'm going to do before the pocket, because I always like to pick the tool and pick the pocket. Yep. So we're going to go tool call and we're going to pick select. From our tool okay? table. So what, should we use a 16 mil? I think mil? 16 mil, mil should be all right. Leave cool. a 16 mil, uh, an eight mil radius in the, in the pocket. Lovely. Pocket corners. So we've got number seven. Yeah. So if we click that, so the tool is now going to be in the Z axis. We can yeah. change that if you have a different machine where your spindle's on the side, you can change it to X axis. So your speed, what spindle speed should we do? I don't know, 3000. Okay. If you want, you can put in, actually, you can put in your cutting speed as well. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. actually, if we do, if I go, 
you carry on. Choose the this. cutting speed. It's only been so on say five minutes. In aluminium, I guess 220 yep. should be all right, depending on whatever the, the, the cutting tool manufacturer says. If we hit, and okay, press it, we hit enter. End. I'll enter. Okay, yep, so three. we need a feed rate in there. Uh, 1500, I know it might be a little bit quick. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, uh, your then... DL means have you got any tools that you want to oversize? We don't. No. Do we? We don't want to no. add anything to it. So and then okay. it'll come up with DR. There's loads of different there's options loads there. there. Fantastic. So if I okay, hit in, so, oh, no, no, no. no. See, so he's going too quick now. <laughs> so too many buttons. we've tool called, right? So that tool will now come into the, into the spindle. It's read that it does a rectangular pocket, but now we need to tell it to perform that cycle. So what we're going to do is we're going to do cycle call. Okay. I like cycle M. What do we have to do next? Is it cycle call by any chance? Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> so we've defined the cycle. We've told the machine what cycle we want to do. So now if we go to cycle call, we're calling up that cycle. So we're going to do cycle call M and then we're just going to end it. Okay, so we're calling up that cycle. If we go reset and start, you can see. We just simulate. All right, so you can simulate the, yeah. the pockets. Oh. There we go. So we've got 150 mil. Uh, material what? stock yep. haven't we and as you can see we can see our little pocket our, sorry our big 50 mil millimeter pocket being done so this is in um your programming status so this will give you a 2d example of what's going on but if we go into our test run you can see how we've got our tool call our cycle death cycle call so if we reset and start I've done a pocket, but I haven't defined oh, not set where it's going to be. Where it's going to it go. It needs to be at 75, So this 75. is great because if something goes like this happens, we haven't run it on the machine. And that, if I told, if you're working in a machine shop, you told your boss this, why didn't you check it first? This is a great way to reduce errors. So what we need to do is we need to move the tool into 150 divided by two, so 75, X 75. So what we'll do is we go back in to here, We've called our tool. So then what I want to do is I want to create a line. Yeah, L. Lovely. Bang. Okay, X, 50. Yeah, or 75. Oh, 75, sorry. Yeah, no, Good math, quick math. Enter. Y, 75. Oh, no. So if you come back and then oh, just then go across. Go. Oh, and then click Y, 75. Perfect. Go across. Enter. Oh, then do you want to pick a... Always go across. Ah, oh, right, okay. Because pick... if you press Enter, it will just give you the X coordinate. If you go across, oh, it will give right, you the okay. Y. So when it goes Z, Let's 50. Go fifth, yeah. Okay. Go across. Across, yeah. Okay, so on here, because we've got five axes, we've got a B axis as well. Yeah. Okay, we don't need that. We don't need uh, radius, radius comp compass. No, we don't, no. because the compensation comes on in the, in the cycle. In the cycle. Okay, yeah. fair enough. So we've got a feed rate, so we can do F max. F max. So Let's that's as fast as the machine there. can go. Sweet. Um, do you want to call any coolant or So anything? if we put M13, what yeah. that will do is it will let the spindle go clockwise and it will turn the cooler on at the same oh, okay. time. Perfect. So if we press end at the yeah. end of that, I wanted to quickly do another line yeah. For me. Okay. And I want you to scroll across with your arrow and just yeah. go to Z. Oh. So in the line That's it, keep and going. hit Z. Yeah. And then just go to Z10. So then we're going to come across to 75, Y75. We're going to come down, down to Z10. Z10. Oh, and hit end. Uh, yeah. So you can put oh, that as F max as well. Sweet. Okay. And then we defined our cycle. If you press end now, sorry. Brian. Yeah. If we go to reset and start. If, sorry. If we go, always go to the top of your program. Press reset and start. You can see now. We're going from it's machine moved. coordinate zero up to... Yeah. Nice. There we go. So we moved right out there. And also what we can do is we can... That zooms in, that zooms out. Okay. And you can go one to one. Brilliant. So, so we should, moved, should we have a look at the simulation? Yeah. Yeah. So, so go into test run. Yeah. Uh, uh, reset. Reset and start. Hey, there we go. So now we're cutting a top pocket right in the middle. Easy. So that just goes to show how quick and easy it is to run a hide nine program. But even I can do it.